Let us now return to our canonical form of our sequential circuit. So what we had here was a set of n inputs, we have p outputs and we have r different state variables, which means that we can have up to 2 to the r states. Each next state variable is written as a function of the current state and the input variables and also the output variables are written as a function of the input and the current state. Our memory in this sequential circuit is our state variables q1. And the only reason that these can be seen as a memory is that we have a separation between q1 and what we have here, the q1+, plus, q2+, plus, and so on. And this separation we here before gave as a set of d elements. And now we're going to replace these d elements with just a delta here. And the delta here means that this is a separation between the q variables and the q plus variables that will allow us to see our q variables as our memory. Our goal now is to make the time instance that this delta is separating our q1 plus and q1 variables very very small. And in fact, we will try to make this delta, this time that they are separated, very close to zero and almost zero. And we can realize that it is possible to put it to zero if we have the case that only one of these variables changes at a time. So every time we move to a new state, we only change one of the variables. And the states that we go to also needs to be stable. So let's see if we can, can achieve this. We define a race-free state assignment as a state assignment where only one state variable changes when the state changes. And we can note that if we have an asynchronously realizable graph, then it is always possible to rewrite this graph such that it can be encoded race-free. And one way to think of this is that the states are corners of an n-dimensional cube and then the only state transitions that we allow are on the edges of this cube. So let's see an example of this and also see what we mean by race in this case. So we will have our graph of four states that we saw before was asynchronously realizable. So we have S 0, S1, S2, and S3. And again, we will just disregard from the output and we will write the graph only looking at the input and the state transition. So we have from S0, we go to S1 when we have the input 0, and we go to S3 when we have the input 1. From S1, we stay here with the input 0, and we go to S2 with the input 1. From S2, we stay in the same state with the input 0, and we go to S0 with the input 1. And for S3, we go to the state S2 when we have the input 0, and we stay in the state S3 when we have the input 1. What we want to do now is a race-free state assignment. So what we'll do is that we'll first write the graph such that it will have the same behavior when we implement it in an asynchronous way and we are also able to make a race-free state assignment. So we can rewrite our graph in this way. And I will just write all of these that we are not going to discuss in more detail. And the edge now that we have left to write is this one, where we go from S2 to S0 with a 1. But since you want to do this asynchronously, it means that the delta that separates the state transitions will go to 0. This time will go to 0. So actually, when we are in state S2 and we get a 1 as an input, we will immediately go to state S3. So we can rewrite this edge such that it goes from S2 to S3 immediately. 
And here we can see that all our state transitions are transitions on the corners of a two-dimensional cube. So from this, let us first try to understand what is the problem when we have rays. So assume we would do the following state assignment. So assume now that S0 is encoded as 1, 0. S1 is encoded as 0, 1. S2 is encoded as 1, 1. And S3 is encoded as 0, 0. Assume now that we are in the state S3 and we get a zero as an input. That means that we go from state S3 to the state S2, which also means that we go from the state that is encoded as zero zero to the state that is encoded as one one. And we denote this Q1, Q2. And similarly here we have Q1 and Q2. If delta goes to zero and we have the case that Q2 changes first, that would mean that our state transition will go from zero, zero, and then for a short while it will go to zero, one, and then the idea is that we should go to one, one after that when Q1 also changes. The problem is that when we go through the state, 0, 1, which is our state S1, and we have a 0 as an input, we will get stuck in state S1, because S1 is stable for the input 0. So in order to avoid having this type of behavior, what we want is to have a state assignment that only change in one variable at a time. So one such state assignment could be to have S0 as 0, 0, S1 as 0, 1, S2 as 1, 1, and S3 as 1, 0. That would mean that if we look at our state transition graph, every time we make a state transition, we will only change either the Q1 variable or the Q2 variable, but never both at the same time. 